Om Ante Hiatus. Uh, I'm back, and I'm going to be talking about uh, a leak code number 26, which is remove duplicates from sorted array. I just missed. I was. I'm in more of a product role now, but I just missed engineering so much I, I had to return. Um, it's actually pretty interesting if you go to. And we do not want to do these updates. Remind me tomorrow. If you go to leak code, I'm not paid by them, but they do have something interesting. If you go to blah, 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 up top explore, and you see, I'm just gonna double check, good. Uh, you see some top interview questions in the easy collection, or there's some, there's some featured ones. You can find um, a nice collection here called easy collection. And yeah, this, this is a good way to kind of just run through uh, a curated list of top interview questions. I think it's going to be fun just to kind of go through all the easies and all the mediums and all the hards. And then, yeah, then, I'm, then I might target like certain specific uh, companies or something afterwards. It was before I was kind of hard to figure out like which question to do, but this is a nice way to frame it. And you see that I've done a fair amount of these before. Uh, today we're going to do remove duplicates from sorted array. So given a sorted array nums, and every time that someone tells you something sorted, that should be a big clue. You want to use that thing being sorted and, 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 and somehow throughout the problem. Remove the duplicates in place such that each element appears only once and returns the new length. So we want to do this in place. We want to not use an extra array. We must do this by modifying the input array in place with O of one extra memory. So we do not want to create um, uh, another array for this. If you could think about this, well, using another array would be pretty simple. You know, you would just say, okay, have I seen this number before? If I haven't, let me just push that or append that to a different array and then return that. So given the nums of 1, 1, 2, we should return a length of 2, with the first two elements of nums being 1 and 2 respectively. It doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return length. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4 should be 5 because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And yeah, it, it also doesn't matter what values are set beyond the uh, return length. Um, yeah, and they give you a little hint here. So um, let's let's think about some things from this problem um, in, in order to think algorithmically. So if it doesn't matter what we leave beyond the return length, then we probably don't want to make any any modifications to that. We just want to use that information and kind of leave that leave that be. So let's go to the big board here. So if we have my apologies, my markers are getting a little old, but they'll make do. If we have one, one, two, well, eventually, what do we want to do? So the first two elements of nums want to be one and two, so we know that. And if we don't make any modifications, we want to be as lazy as possible. It's going to be one, two, two. And we'll actually return two. Um, that's not the hard part of the problem, keeping track of that. But that, that actually is, is an interesting thing. So we want to, we can probably use that, use, use um, some, some idea of that. So let's... Let's think. Let's let's actually write out the zero zero one 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 two two three three four, and then and then think about like how we want to modify that. So zero zero one one. I'm just referring to the array two two three three four. So eventually, this we want this to start with a zero one two three four. So how how do we go about doing that? <clears throat> so. We want to remove the duplicates in place. So we know we're going to have to loop over the entire length of the array. So we're not going to be able to beat a time complexity of, of linear time complexity, right? Um, we have to see every element to know if we've seen if there's a duplicate, right? Because if this was, you know, three, four, five, we still need, we need that five. <clears throat> so we need some type of loop. And then we also want to keep track of are there, ooh, excuse me, are there. <coughs> Are there duplicates? And so what's an easy way to, to keep track of things if things are duplicates in a sorted array? Well, we know that all the duplicates are going to be in order, right? That, that the, all, all those things are going to be in order. So we can use, and this is kind of the, the hint, that if we have some type of head, so if we're looping through this array and we keep, uh, keep track of a head, um, once we get to something that is not um, a duplicate, we can advance that head and replace that. So if we have this 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, we have this 0. 
or walking through, we look at the zero. It's like, well, is this zero the same? This this second zero the same as this first one? Yeah, it is. Um, so we don't we don't advance the head. Then we find this one. Is this one currently the same as, as the zero we're looking at? No. So you advance the head up here, replace that that value that one, and you continue through. And then so that we move up to this this other one. Is this one the same as the one that we're currently looking at? Yep. Is this one the same one that we're currently looking at? Yep. Is this two? No. So then you advance the head up here. You replace this. So now we have zero, one, two. And let's just do the three just to really hammer the point home. Uh, so you have zero, one, two. We were looking at this two. Um, and so then we look at another two. Is that two the same? Yep. Is that three the same? Next. No, it's not. We advance the head up here. And we make that replacement. And then eventually we get the four as well. Um, so I had the purple in head, and I wasn't writing a, like for for a for loop uh, the other the other one. But let's go to the code, and um, and hopefully that will become a little bit clearer. So let me get. Um, so if we have that head, and we start that as zero. Actually, I'm gonna go to the other tab. Oops. Yeah, not that it matters. Uh, ver head equals zero, and then we're just walking through the the nums. We can start at i. We can start at the first uh, element, um, which is actually the second, because uh, you know that um, arrays are zero indexed in JavaScript as well as most programming languages. Because the head is already at zero, so we don't have to we don't have to start at the i equals uh, zero. I is less than nums dot length. Give my typing. I've recently been on Windows, so moving back to a Mac, which is what this is on, is a little bit tricky. So if the what we're currently looking at in the for loop does not equal the head like where we were before, then we advance the head and then we make a replacement. Nums of the head is going to be what we're looking at right now. So if it's not a duplicate, we move the head up one, and then we, we make that replacement. So now it's 0, 1 instead of 0, 0. And then at the end of the day, we just return the head uh, plus 1, because that will be the, um, the length of all the, the non-duplicates. So let's go ahead and submit this solution, and then go ahead and, and see if this is, is good, or if it's do some bug hunting. We're accepted. Uh, you can look at more details on the old leak code here. Uh, this says it's beat 78% of Java script submissions. There's actually some interesting, you can zoom an area by dragging the chart. I didn't realize this before. And so we can look at some different ones. So let's see which runtime beats us. Um, this one I think is basically the same thing. Uh, yeah, it really is just exactly the same thing. So instead of head, they just call this J. I think head is a little bit more descriptive than, than calling it J. Um, this one that I think that we're the same as, this little, this solution I think, oops, Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, that's pretty gross. <laughs> get edit that out in post. Um, this one is uh, uses a double while loop, um, so they have a left and a right. While the right is less than the nums dot length, the nums dot left is, is assigned to the right, and while the right is less than the nums dot length and the nums dot left equals the right, they just kind of advance that. So they're doing something pretty similar to the, to our original one, our for loop. Um, but yes, yeah, this is, this seems like you know a little bit more complicated. That they do have a double while loop, and so I think this will be the same time complexity as our for loop. But yeah, this it, when when in doubt, if you if you can avoid while loops, I think generally it's 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 nice because you can you know avoid um, you know uh, stack over like or time limit exceeded. So I think our solution's a little bit, a little bit simpler. Uh, let's go back and then rewrite this in Python, uh, just, just to really hammer it home. And Python will be very similar. So with Python, the white space is important for the, the, the actual logic of the program. So we have uh, their head, and it uses an A instead of a. Uh, Nums, which is interesting. So no var here. Uh, head equals zero. Um, we have a for loop for i in 
range of length of A. Actually, I didn't, I didn't try this beforehand, so I might, I might uh, fail here. Um, if A of I does not equal A of head, then we advance the head, and then we also reassign what we're looking at. So A of head is going to be A of I, and at the end of the day, we're going to return the head plus one. So this looks very similar. And we submit this. We get a runtime error. List index out of range. Uh, range of length of A. Line 58. Ooh, that's not that useful. Hmm. <laughs> this is the, uh, the joys of doing stuff live and without testing it. Um, let's look at the more details here. Oh, okay. So this for uh, empty array didn't like this. Um, so we can write a little guard clause at the top of our code here and say uh, if not a return uh, zero. It's interesting to me that I don't think we needed to have that in JavaScript, so that might not be the problem that we had. No, it actually was. So we have, we have a guard clause. If there's not any length, we, we, we have to return zero. Otherwise, th this is going to work out. So actually, I haven't looked at um, how fast this is. So this is, at least this, this run is not super quick in, in Python, so there might be some Pythonic things that are optimized. So the little baby right here. If length nums equals zero return, this guy's actually the print statement. For i and one, oh yeah, so actually I didn't start from one. Um, if nums of j does not equal nums of i, uh, j equals j plus one, you know, it's there, this is basically the same. Yeah, this is the, the same algorithm. Um, let's see if there's anything a little bit different. Uh, no, these, these all look to be pretty similar. So yeah, this is uh, Programmer Mitch. I think I'll be signing off with that. Um, we're going to be going through, so next time is best time to buy and sell stocks. One, I think I already did this, so I'll probably be doing Rotate and Array, which uh, should be interesting. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I uh, hope to see you next time.